I'm Paul Perkins with the check of your ag weather. The forecast stays dry through the middle of next week. Daytime highs remain in the mid-50s to around 60 through Saturday as a large area of Pacific high pressure builds east. South wind gusts to 30 to 35 are likely on Veterans Day with the approach of low pressure. A warm front lifting north bumps our highs into the 60s on Sunday. Highs warm into the mid-60s to the low 70s Monday through Wednesday when a ridge of high pressure over the southern plains taps into warmer air over the desert southwest. For the long term, the window starts to close for a good harvest weather. On a mild note, warmer than normal temperatures remain likely for Tuesday through the Wednesday before Thanksgiving on November 22nd in Nebraska and Kansas. Slightly below normal to near normal precipitation the middle of next week in Nebraska and Kansas. Transitions to above normal precipitation late next week through November 22nd. With the milder temperatures, though, we should avoid seeing any wintry precipitation as we get close to Thanksgiving. Checking the latest regional drought monitor, Nebraska remains at 60% drought-free. Drought-free to abnormally dry areas are found in much of the west and central, along with the southeast and northeast corners. There's a small area of moderate to severe drought from St. Paul to east of Kearney, down to near Red Cloud, as well as much of eastern Nebraska. Extreme to exceptional drought coverage continues to be at 11% of Nebraska and includes east central locations along and east of a line from Fullerton to Grand Island, Hastings, and Superior. Kansas decreased a percentage point to 15% drought free, with drought free conditions to abnormal dryness found in much of the west, south central, and the corners of the southeast and northeast. Most of central and eastern Kansas are locked in moderate to severe drought. There was a percentage point increase to 8% in Kansas, meaning an extreme to exceptional drought, including areas from Stockton to Russell and Beloit, along with Rice in northern Reno counties and Howard to Sedan towards the southeast. Key weather factors affecting the markets include better rains for Argentina, heavy rain in southern Brazil, and weather turning drier in central Brazil. A cold front crossing the southern and eastern U.S. becomes more active while tapping into disorganized moisture from the tropics. The next several days, rain stretches from Texas to the southern Appalachians, benefiting emerging winter grains and cover crops. Most areas receive no more than 1 to 2 inches of rain, but 5-day totals could top 4 inches in coastal Texas. Most of the rest of the U.S., including large sections of the plains, Midwest, and West, experience dry weather. Southern Brazil is once again seeing heavy rain after a short dry stretch, which increases flooding and wetness issues for the remaining wheat harvest, as well as corn and soybean planting and development. Central Brazil, though, is drier with well below normal rainfall, which is delaying soybean planting. Dry weather in central Brazil is forcing some producers to replant, and it may delay the second crop corn later in the crop season. Towards Argentina, more rain is lined up for tomorrow through the weekend and again next week. Rainfall mostly benefits Argentina with corn and soybeans seeing improving conditions, but the more active weather may slow maturing and harvest of winter wheat. With the check of your ag weather, I'm Paul Perkins.